If you go onto the motherboard section of PC Part Picker, you'll find there are 29 pages of motherboards, with each page having 100 motherboards, so about 2,900 motherboards. With all these choices, how do you find a perfect motherboard for you? Welcome to Hardy's Hobbies. Now, choosing a motherboard really just boils down to three different things, which are chipset, form factor, and other features that you're looking for. The first step in choosing a chipset is to decide whether you're going to overclock or not overclock your CPU, because this will determine what chipset you choose. If you are building a budget i3 or Ryzen 3, or even i5 or Ryzen 5 PC that you are not planning to overclock, you have a couple of options. AMD does offer a motherboard series that does not overclock, which is the A320 series. But with the price gap between A320 and B350 being so small, I really just recommend that you guys jump onto B350 series unless you are on a very tight budget. As for Intel, you have three options, the H370, B360, or H310. If you want a top-end motherboard with all the bells and whistles that come along nowadays, but just don't care to overclock, then H370 is what you're looking for. If you don't really care about all the new features and just want a solid, reliable motherboard, then B360 is probably for you. As for the H310 series, the same thing goes as the A320 series from AMD. Unless you are on a very tight budget, I recommend that you jump onto B360. If you are planning to overclock, however, from Intel's side, you are forced to buy a Z series motherboard, which corresponds to your CPU, which will probably be Z370 or Z390. With AMD, however, you still have several options and this only cuts out the A320 series due to their stellar backwards compatibility, so you would still have the B350 and B450 and for higher end, X370 and X470. Unless you are building a top end gaming PC with the Ryzen 7 and the latest GPU, I strongly recommend that you guys check out the B series instead of the X series. Really, there are no big difference between the X series and B series. The B series does have inferior power supply system, but for most of you guys, that really won't make that big of a difference. You will most likely be able to overclock to the same gigahertz, if anything, maybe 100 megahertz less. So, unless there is some specific feature that you want from the X370 or X470 chipsets, I recommend going with a B series motherboard. So at this point, no matter where you stand, you still have two options. As for Intel, you have the Z370 and Z390. And for most AMD builders, you have the B350 and B450. And for higher end AMD builders, you have the X370 and X470. And in all of these cases, I would recommend that you go with the older model because the newer model will not give you any more performance and just cost you more money. Now that we got chipset out of the way, the rest will be a breeze. The next thing to decide is the motherboard size or form factor, and this is pretty simple. There are three main form factors when it comes down to motherboards, which are ATX, Micro ATX, and Mini ITX, with ATX being the most common. You also have other form factors such as EATX, but for most people, the most common three will be enough. This is also reliant on what case you are buying, because unless you want a bunch of space underneath your motherboard, then you probably want to match these two up. From a technical perspective, ATX motherboards have the most PCIe slots and M.2 slots as well. Micro ATX have a little bit less PCI slots and usually only one M.2 slot due to the fact that they are shorter. Finally, mini ITX motherboards generally only have one PCIe slot and also cut down DIMM slots to two. But for most of you guys who are just going to have a single GPU with 16GB of RAM and maybe an M.2 as a boot drive, any of these will really work. It really comes down to how big you want your PC to be. Are you building a small compact PC or a big all out PC? This really does just come down to personal preference. The smaller motherboards are cheaper because they are smaller, but don't base your decision just based on that. Don't forget to think about the limitations of smaller motherboards as well, such as less dim slots, which is the main limitation. Finally, the last thing to do is filter based on your personal needs. And here are some things that you should not forget to filter out. How many USB ports do you need and what type are they? What type of audio interface do you want in your motherboard? Do you want the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi card in your motherboard? Is there a color scheme that you are looking for or do you want your motherboard to be RGB? Make sure to verify that your motherboard has these before jumping onto it. And one more bonus thing to consider is brand choice. 
For everyone, I recommend ASUS, MSI, or Gigabyte. These are the three main motherboard manufacturers and they have really good quality motherboards. If you are on a tight budget, however, ASRock and Biostar aren't bad choices either. Lastly, the series that I would recommend that you guys buy is the Strix series from ASUS. They aren't extreme like the Hero, Formula, or Maximus, but they are above average and come with all the bells and whistles you can think of and all the sizes that you want. And since they are black and silver and come with RGB, they will fit in with any color scheme and are color neutral. The gaming series from MSI is definitely also a top pick. But that's just my preference. Is there something crucial that I forgot to say about motherboards? Make sure to comment down below so that other people can benefit from that. Also, if you guys like this video, then make sure to drop a like and consider subscribing if you would like to see more videos just like this one. But until then, I'm Hardy, and I'll see you guys on the next one.